students and welcome to a new episode. This is Target English, Grade 9, featuring episode 23, covering module 2, unit 6, in which we will be focusing on grammar. In today's episode, we will be focusing on four main topics. We will start with collocations, followed by order of adjectives, and we will also have a look at the present perfect simple tense, finally by the present perfect continuous tense. Now to start with, we're going to start with collocations. What are collocations? Collocation is basically two or more words that often go together. They are words that are commonly used together in English. And you always see these words together. For example, uh, if your teacher tells you to pay attention, that's a collocation here. The word free time is also a collocation. Let's look at some of the common collocations in the English language. You have the collocation good enough. This work is simply not good enough. So the word good and enough usually go together to form this fixed relationship, let's say. Another common collocation is best possible. For example, getting a perfect score is the best possible result. And a third common collocation in English is crystal clear. You usually hear that when people are talking about liquid substances, let's say. The water is crystal clear, so it's clear like crystal, and drunk without any treatment. With collocations, they're not only used with only one part of speech, so you don't only have a verb and a verb, or a noun and a noun collocation. You can have different combinations. And in today's episode, we're going to focus on the adverb and adjective collocation form. Let's start with a common adverb and adjective collocation, deeply. What words usually go with deeply to form a collocation? You have deeply worried. I'm deeply worried about you. You usually often hear these two words together. You have deeply unhappy. I was deeply unhappy. Deeply committed is another common collocation. It was a deeply committed performance. Deeply affected, if you want to say the train system has been deeply affected. Deeply affected is a very common collocation in English. So these two words usually go together. Another common adverb and adjective collocation is the adverb utterly. Let's see which words go with it. Utterly ridiculous. It is utterly ridiculous and totally absurd. It's a common collocation here. If you want to say this is utterly ridiculous. Utterly furious. He is utterly furious and he wants to get even. Utterly fantastic. He was utterly fantastic. So what is utterly, as you can see from the pictures in the sentence? You understand that it means totally or absolutely. Utterly beautiful. She always looks utterly beautiful. Utterly amazed. I'm utterly amazed as a basketball coach, he said. Now that we've got a general idea on how to use or form collocations, let's match some expressions to get the right collocations. As you can see from the table, you have column A and column B. You're going to match the adverbs with the suitable adjectives in order to form a correct collocation, and then we're going to write sentences. Let's look at the first one, deeply. Deeply greeted or deeply rooted or deeply dressed. If something is deeply deep, greeted is to greet someone, rooted in the roots or dressed, an outer look or appearance. So it is deeply rooted, excellent. An example sentence would be, Ramadan is deeply rooted in our faith and culture. What about beautifully? Beautifully greeted or beautifully dressed? If you look nice, your outer look, you are beautifully dressed. Good job. Children are beautifully dressed for eat. And finally, we have cordially greeted in a good manner. Teachers are cordially greeted for their efforts. Let's look at some more examples. Again, column A and column B. We're going to match them and write some sentences. We have highly 
ridiculously and absolutely for our adverbs. Highly what? Highly easy, highly wrong, or highly successful. Think of something as, as in high, in rank, or position. So it is excellent, highly successful. An example sentence would be, my father is a highly successful businessman. What about ridiculously? Ridiculously what? Easy or ridiculously wrong? If something is very easy to a point that it is ridiculously easy, excellent. The test was ridiculously easy for all of us. So it was very easy. And finally, we have absolutely wrong. If I want to tell someone you are absolutely wrong about this. An example sentence would be, it's absolutely wrong to share rumors. Moving on to the second part of today's episode, which is the adjective order. Now, when you want to write a sentence that has adjectives, you want to describe your noun here, and you want to use more than one or two adjectives, there's an order that you need to follow. You don't just write them like this in your sentence. There's an order of adjectives that you need to follow. Now, how to place adjectives in order? You begin with the determiner, a, an, the, both, either, some, many, my, your, our, followed by an opinion. Is it good, bad, great, terrible, pretty, silly, lovely, beautiful, etc. Size comes after opinion. Is it huge, big, large, enormous, etc. Shape, is it flat, round, triangular, rectangular, etc. Age, Young, old, new, ancient, antique, youthful, etc. Color, red, black, pale, bright, faded, orange, and other examples. Origin, is it French, American, Canadian, Mexican, Greek, Swiss, etc. And the material, wooden, silk, metal, paper, gold, silver. And finally, uh, the purpose, writing, rolling, sleeping, roasting, running, dancing, which can be optional at times. So you're going to start mainly with the opinion followed by size, shape, age, color, origin, and material. That's how it's supposed to be, as you can see on the right side. Let's correct some of these sentences and place the adjectives in the correct order. Let's read the sentence together. Mirror, splendid mosaic tiles. Let's identify first the type of the adjective. Mirror is material. Does it come first? No. Splendid is an opinion. And mosaic, again, is a material. How can I rearrange my sentence to make it a correct one? Excellent. I start with the opinion. Splendid mirror mosaic tiles. Very good. Opinion followed by material and again mosaic, another material. Let's take another example. Some rooms hark back to the old good days of Kuwait. Let's identify our adjectives here. We have age, old, and good. What is good? It's an opinion. Are they correct? Are they in order? No. So let's switch then. So are the answers going to be? Some rooms hark back to the good old days of Kuwait. We started with the opinion followed by the age. Another example, a wooden huge carved doorway. Again, there is a problem with the arrangement. Wooden is material, which is supposed to come last. Huge is size and carved is the shape. So let's rearrange them. How is the sentence going to be? Good job, a huge carved wooden doorway. Size, shape and then material. Let's complete a task that you can find in your workbook, page 20. The task tells you to use the given words to write sentences by describing the following pictures. Let's look at number one. You have a picture of a car and you have adjectives like white, Japanese, and stylish. How can we rearrange the adjectives and write a sentence? So, white is a color. Japanese is origin and stylish is an opinion. I start with what? I start with opinion followed by 
the color followed by the origin. So a good sentence would be, I bought a stylish white Japanese car. Number two, you have a book here and you have the adjectives thrilling, English and old. Thrilling is an opinion, English is an origin and old is an age. I start with what? The opinion followed by the age followed by the origin as you can see from the table here. So he is reading a thrilling old English story. Number three, you have impressive, tall, and modern building, let's say. Impressive is an opinion. Tall is what? You're talking about size here. Modern, it's not old. Modern, so we're talking about age. Let's organize the adjectives. We can place them in the sentence to make a sentence like, it's an impressive, tall, modern tower. We started with opinion, size, followed by age. Now that we've covered the order of adjectives, it's time to move on to the present perfect. Now, when do we use the present perfect tense? We use the present perfect for actions that started in the past and continue in the present. So they haven't really ended. For example, we have already joined a club to play tennis. It started in the past, but it continues to the present. Example two, they have been married for nearly 10 years, an event that started in the past and continues to the present. We also use the present perfect to talk about our experience up to the present time. So a previous experience up to the present time. For example, he has written three books, he's done that already, and he is working on another one. With the present perfect, there are some keywords that we use in order to help us identify this certain period of time. You have since, for, already, just, yet, and ever. And whenever you see any of these words in a sentence within the present perfect, you'd understand which tense that is being used. Now, the form or how to form a present perfect sentence, you start with the subject, followed by has or have, depending on what the subject takes, followed by the past participle. For example, she has lived, lived is our past participle, in London since 2012. What if I want to write a negative sentence? It's the same form, but I add one more thing. I add not after has or have. I start with the subject, followed by has not, or have not, hasn't, haven't, followed by the past participle. For example, I haven't found my lost keys. I want to form a present perfect question. How do I do that? I start with question words, either what, when, why, where, or how, followed by a helping verb, has or have, followed by the noun or pronoun, I, you, he, she, it, we, they, and followed by the past participle. Now that you have the order of forming a question, let's put that into practice. Let's form a question on the following sentence. Layla has gone to the mall. How can I form a question? There's something I start with, a question word, excellent. Where has Layla gone? So I start with a question word, followed by what? Has, followed by our noun, Leila, and followed by the past participle, gone. Good job. Now that we've looked at the present perfect, it's time to look at the present perfect continuous, which has a similar idea. How do we form the present perfect continuous? You start with the subject, followed by has, have been and you end with verb plus i n g so it's continuous the action is still going on for example i have been running for two hours so you have this continuous action or the effect of the action is still going on what if i want to form a negative sentence i start with the subject again has or have 
followed by not been. I add not and been, followed by verb ing. For example, it hasn't, has not, it hasn't been raining all night. What if we want to form a question? We start with the question word, what, when, why, where, or how. Helping verb, has and have. Nouns and pronouns, if, you, he, she, it, we, they. And finally, been, verb, ing. Let's form a question on the following sentence. Ahmed has been working at this company for three years. How can I form a question? How long, that's my question word, has Ahmed been working at this company? Has, followed by the noun Ahmed, been, remember it's important to include it, plus verb ing. How long has Ahmed been working at this company? Let's complete a task that you can find in your student book, page 49. It tells you to use the present perfect simple or continuous to complete the sentences below. Let's look at number one. You have they and arrive in brackets and yet. We want to form a question. We use yet for questions. So my answer will be, excellent, have they arrived yet? Number two, Lucy, in brackets run, 2,000 meters today. I want to use the present perfect. How can I complete the sentence? Lucy has run 2,000 meters today. Number three, I drink more water recently and I feel better. Recently, it's a key word we use with the present perfect continuous. So, I, excellent, have been drinking more water recently and I feel better. In today's episode, we learned about collocations. We learned how to place adjectives in order. We revised the present perfect and we practiced using the present perfect continuous. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.